When you're in the business of selling Yaw's Word, which is what I am doing, which I'm always doing, I'm always trying to sell it. I'm trying to make a sales pitch. I'm trying to get anybody who will take the greatest gift that we've ever had, which are the law, statutes, and commands of our creator. And uh, when you are selling them as long as we have, you end up with a set of rules. Now, there's a set of rules that we, as Torah keepers, we don't keep because they wouldn't apply to us. Because we, want, we are the house of Yashrael. We do not want to be that house of Gentile. And if you are the house of Gentile, that's a bad thing. If you consider yourself a Gentile, that is a bad thing. That means you are outside of the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator. It means that you have taken another path. That you are walking contrary to the Torah. That you are walk, turning to the left and you're turning to the right instead of going straight forward. Now, I've composed this little list. And this video is called the House of Gentile and the laws of the House of Gentiles. Now, for anybody who has any disputes with any of what is in this, please, let's put these in the comments. Let's discuss this from a scriptural standpoint. If you would like to defend the Christian religion, this is your time to do it. When we are looking at the evilest demon of them all, we would have to think that's Hasatan. And we know him as a first demon. We know him as the adversary, the lion who's roaming around, seeking who he may devour, seeking those who are not in the Torah, seeking those who are able to be swayed, seeking those who he's able to destroy their lives. And even if you're in the Torah, he's still seeking you, especially seeking you. But we know which way to go and which way not to go. So this is a list of the commands of the house of Gentiles. And I'd like to go over this. First demon 1.1. One, one. The laws of Yahuwah are on the cross. Now, that is the very first thing that if you're ever talking to a Christian, the Christians have been programmed in a cult. And their programming is this. They say the laws of Yahuwah are on the cross. And for those who keep the Torah, we know that's absolutely not true. That is without a shadow of a doubt. That is the biggest lie that first demon ever gave us. That the laws of God are on the cross. Now let's continue on. First demon one, two. Grace will save you, not the law. And there'll be a lot of arguments right there. And a lot of the Christians will go, oh, Jason, you are just a heretic. Jesus will save you. And it's not the works it has nothing to do with any of this. But those of us who keep the Torah, we know differently than that. First demon one, three, eat the pork. Jesus made all foods clean. And again, you'll always hear my dogs barking. I can't do anything about it. Eat the pork. Jesus made all foods clean. Now we get that out of Matthew, right? This is where the Christians go. The first thing that any Christian will be programmed to tell you is that all food has been made clean. Jesus made all food clean so you can eat whatever it is you want to eat. Even though it goes completely against Leviticus 11, you can do what you want to do. First demon 1-4, Jesus is your Sabbath. I have heard that probably thousands of times throughout the years where nobody wants to keep the seventh day Shabbat because everybody changed Sabbath to Sunday and Jesus is your Sabbath. First demon 1-5, Paul is your God. He says... And yes, he says all the time, right? That is, I, that is a classic. That might be closer to number two or number one. Paul said, everybody quotes Paul. They quote scriptures out of context. And when you are quoting Paul, you are an eavesdropper. Number one, you're an eavesdropper. You're not a church in Corneth. You're not a person in the assembly of Corneth. You're not there. You weren't the ones that wrote the letters to Paul to begin with to get his response. So if you're taking a doctrine that is outside of the Torah and scriptures, then Paul is your God. He says, Peter saw all food is clean. First demon 1.6. Oh yes, there we go again. Thousands of times, everybody tells me, yes, Peter saw in his vision that all food was made to eat, slay and go eat. I have demons that tell me that all the time. I have demons that make unclean food for people all the time. And they say the same thing. And it's all about, it goes back to first demon one five. Paul is your God. And Peter saw all food is clean. First demon one seven. Being a Gentile is a good thing. I have seen that maybe 
10,000 times. Everybody's, oh, we're Gentiles. Oh, we're Gentiles. If you are a Gentile, here is the problem. We're talking, the people that are saved in the end are the house of Yashrael and the house of Yahuda. So these are the house of Gentile. The house of Gentile has never been saved and they won't be saved. So when being a Gentile is actually a very evil thing, you wouldn't want to be a Gentile. All right, first demon one eight. Sunday is the new Sabbath. That's what they'll tell you. They will go on the first day of the week and everybody says, oh, no, no, Sunday's the new Sabbath. Yeah, because we changed it. And when you actually look up the history of who changed it, it was the Catholic Church. 300 and some years after the walking of our Messiah, they decided they were going to change it. And they were all going to get on the same little satanic calendar. And everybody's been on that satanic calendar since then. All right. First, first demon one nine. The laws of God are for the Jews. Oh, really? Yeah, we hear that all the time. The thing is, you don't want to be a Jew. Jews don't believe in Messiah Yahushua and Jews keep books outside of the Torah. They keep a huge set of books called the Talmud. And you would not want to be outside of the Torah because you're breaking the commands of the Torah when you are doing this. First Demon 110, you can't keep the laws. That's what I'll hear all the time. Jason, you are a heretic. You can't keep the laws. You are, you're just bad for even trying. But for those of us who are Torah keepers, we know that's not true. First Demon 111, the laws were made to show us we couldn't keep them. That's right. Our creator created a whole set of laws, guidelines, and a set of way of life, but they're too hard for us to bear, so we really can't keep them. It's kind of a joke when he says that we should keep them for all generations. We know they're too hard to keep. Why would we even do this? First Demon 112, there are only two commandments. Yep, there are two commandments, and that's all the, the Christians will even consider and, but the problem is when the very first commandment is to love your Elohim with all your heart, mind, and soul and your neighbor as yourself and the rest of the Torah hangs on that, this is why this gets put into First Demon 113 because we have a lot of laws and it's not just two, but if you really loved your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, then you would love his words. You would love his Torah and nobody does. First Demon 113. The house of Gentiles are raptured. Yes, you see it every Sunday. You'll see the preachers on YouTube and everybody's, oh, we're about to be raptured. We're not going to have to go through any tribulation. We can eat our pork. We can do what we want and we can worship on the wrong day. We can even call our, the name of Yahuwah something else. We'll call him God and it's okay. We'll call the, son of the, the name of the son of God. We'll call him Jesus. When there wasn't any letter in Hebrew, there was no J's in Hebrew. The letter wasn't invented till the year 1529. So you can go ahead and keep saying that, right? There we go. First Demon 114. You are no longer under bondage. You are free. Yes, Jason, those old laws, those things, you can't keep those. We're not under that bondage. Who would want to be under that heavy yoke of burden that just breaks your back day after day? We're not under that crazy stuff. Let's go on. First Demon 116. You should keep the moral laws, but not the Sabbath. Nine out of ten is good enough. And the Christians won't say that. They'll say, yes, we keep the moral laws because that's Exodus 20. Because everybody knows Exodus 20, except they're still only getting a 90%, even if he, they keep nine to the ten right, because they don't have Shabbat right. So keeping Sabbath means you're the house of Yashrael. If you don't keep the Sabbath and you're worshiping on Sunday, you're the house of Gentile. First Demon 117, God knows your heart and how pure you are. You have no idea how many, time I've heard, how many times I've heard that. Everybody goes, oh, God knows my heart. I've heard people sitting there eating pork and they're sitting there and they'll pray over the pork and they, they bless the pork and they, will, they say that God knows their heart, but they're still eating something that is an abomination to our creator. He tells us not to eat pork. And he says the prayers of those who eat swine are an abomination to him. He hates it. He hates it completely. But hey, this is the house of Gentile. We don't have those same kind of laws as those Torah keepers. First Demon 118. You can celebrate pagan holidays because God knows your heart. 
That's right. Christmas is a family time. Easter is all about family. We go to church and they have Easter egg hunts and they go to church and we'll even have a October party. We'll have a festival party and people still dress up as demons and wicked things like that. Hey, this is the house of Gentile. We're not under that Torah stuff. Why would we want to stay away from stuff that's satanic, if you know what I mean, right? First demon, 119. Just pray the curses off the swine and eat up. As I alluded to, I have literally seen people sit there and they will pray over their swine and they don't care what they're eating. They don't care. They love the pig. They love that salty crack cocaine Christian pig's taste. They love it. And this is, this is the house of Gentile. Hey, we don't have rules under the house of Gentile. These are the only rules we have right here. So if you're the house of Gentile, this is for you. First demon 120. The Holy Spirit tells me what is what sin is. You don't need any laws. Wow, wow, if that's the case, you, you know, that I've heard that so many times and I will see people sitting there again, eating their swine that tell me the Holy Spirit is with them and that God loves them and knows their heart. And if we all remember, the Bible does say God knows our heart. Yah knows our heart well. And he says the heart of man is extremely wicked and it's vile and it does evil things and out of the heart comes evil madness. First demon 121, Abraham's faith was counted as righteousness, which means you don't need to keep the laws. Right, right. Abraham didn't have laws. Moshe had some new school laws. Adam didn't have laws. Um, all Enoch didn't have laws. Nobody sacrificed right up until Moshe. Moshe was the first time you ever heard of an animal sacrifice, right? Well, you guys know I'm being completely sarcastic. You know I'm completely being um, a jokester on this because we know that Adam had sacrifices. We know that all of the people prior to Moshe had sacrifices and they had they walked with our creator in that. First Demon 122, since you can't sacrifice, you can't keep the laws. Jason... You can't keep this. You can't keep a Levitical priesthood. You can't sacrifice animals. And since you can't do that, there are no laws. That's for the old people of old. That's for God's chosen people. Yes, you are right. The laws of our creator are for Yah's chosen people. And um, yes, we can absolutely keep all the laws, but we can't keep the Levitical laws because we shouldn't. Because there is precedence. You will burn yourself up. You will end up dead. You will do something wrong. You don't have the ways it should be done. And you're not a Levite. You're not from the house of Aaron. First Demon 123. Jesus fought those law-abiding Pharisees so we do not have to keep those pesky laws. That's right. Messiah Yahushua came in and battled Torah keepers. Well, that's what the Christians believe. I'm not going to leave it with that because everybody who has read the Torah and has read scriptures, notice these Pharisees and Sadducees were religious cults outside of keeping the Torah. They had 25 books they call the Talmud. In the Talmud, you can have sex with a child, a three-year-old child, and it's okay, right? Do you want to know what Talmudic circumcision is? They actually put their mouth down after they circumcise on the boy's genitals and they drink the blood, right? That is what Jews of today do. You won't find that in mainstream media. You won't find anyone that talks about this. You do not want to be a Jew, right? So the guys that were battling Messiah Yahushua were those Talmudic Jews. They were the ones that were circumcising the children right there and drinking the blood, which is an abomination to our creator. So our Messiah was fighting ruthless, evil Satanists. He wasn't, he wasn't fighting Torah keepers by any means. First Demon 124. I am under the new, better covenant, not that worn out one. I don't know how many hundreds of times people have said that. And we will read this new covenant here when we end. Because I'd like to tell you about this. But yeah, we're under the new covenant. That old covenant means nothing. We, oh, honey, that thing's old. That's in the dust. That's in the dirt bin. That's not for us. All right, First Demon 125. If you break one law, you break them all. So why even try? Again, hundreds of times have I heard this. And hundreds of times people are unwilling to go the extra mile. They don't even know what the laws of, of Yah are. 
but they will completely condemn them, refuse to keep them, refuse to learn them, and they do not care what our Creator has to say. And yes, if you break one law, you do break them all. That is why we attempt not to break the law. And just me saying that is heresy to the Christians. Oh, you think you're sinless, Jason. I, I never said that. I never said that at all. In fact, people will know that when I talk, I will tell you, I am the greatest sinner among all of us. I have nothing dialed in. I don't have it together. And if you think that I'm a holy roller or holier than thou, this ain't me at all. First Demon 2.1. So we made it through the first book, the, the first chapter of First Demon. And now we're in First Demon 2.1. Once saved, always saved. Yes, sir, Bob. There is no way to lose that salvation. I can do whatever I want to do. I can eat forever at the pig buffet line, and I can never lose that salvation because our Creator loves me so much that I can do whatever I want outside of His will, and He will take me in and He will rapture me because I the bad people get raptured, right? Yeah. Okay. First Demon two two. A prayer at eight year old eight years old will save you for life. How many times have I heard that? Oh, yeah, I got saved when I was eight years old. The preacher came up and said, hey, he talked to a whole bunch of kids. These kids are six years old, seven years old, and they have a preacher, right? And the preacher goes, hey, who wants to be saved? What kid doesn't want to be saved? Oh, they all raise their hand. I do, I do. Who wants to live with Jesus forever? And who wants to abide with him? Oh, I do, I do, I do. Well, all you got to do is say this little prayer. I, Jason, I take Jesus into my heart that he will walk with me forever. Amen. And they'll probably pray that to Jesus instead of Yahuwah. And it is the wrong prayer. That is not the prayer. The, the, that is not how to be saved. Being saved is a path. It is a lifestyle. It is a journey. It is not a destination you make by raising your hand at eight years old. First Demon 2, 3. My, my pastor said, Jason, my pastor said it was okay to eat the pork because we aren't the people from back in the days. Yep. That is right. I know. Your pastor says this. Your pastor will quote Paul and everybody quotes stuff out of context without rightly dividing the word of truth. First Demon 2.4. Paul said. Now we have an official Paul said. We had a Paul said up there, but now we have an official one. Paul wrote a response to a letter to a little church. Not to you, but it's your doctrine. Be free. That's right. Get rid of the pesky laws. Yeah, Paul doesn't want to be. Paul says that we can be free from the law, that the law is for old people. We don't need to circumcise. We don't need the law. We don't need nothing because Paul is our deity and Paul will be the one that saves us, we hope. First Demon 2.5. You are a modern day Pharisee for trying to keep those, those laws. I don't know how many times people have, have condemned me to hell and have said that you are a modern day Pharisee. And all I am doing is I am parroting. What does the scripture say? I don't have my own opinions on a lot of this stuff. I don't have my own doctrine. I, my doctrine is the scriptures. And that is what it is, right? I don't care what Paul said. I'm sure if Paul said something that is outside of what the Torah says, then I don't care what Paul said. Let's go on to the next one. First Demon 2.5. You uh, actually two six. The Old Testament is history, completely irrelevant. You got the new covenant now. Yeah, yeah, you do. All right, First Demon two seven. Your works won't save you. Okay, our works won't save us. How many times people are like, oh, you think your salvation is works? Oh, you're a heretic. <laughs> you know they're hissing and, and and just blowing spit all over me, and I'm like, well, you know. Um, the, James talks about it, about showing his faith and his works, right? If you want to see his faith, you will see his works, right? Faith without works is useless. There's nothing there, right? Why would we ever, why would you want to walk as our creator walk, but not do what our creator says to do, right? So <laughs> it's just doesn't make any sense. All right. First demon two, eight, you will be judged by as God, by God as a heretic, Right. That is, I've heard that so many times. Uh, it's again, I've been damned to hell so many times by people who don't read the Torah, who don't know the scriptures, who have never read the Bible, and yet have had a guy in a pulpit tell them this all their lives. So this is it, guys. This is the house of Gentile. This is the laws of the house of Gentiles. Um, if you are a Gentile, these are your laws. If these are your excuses, these are your laws. And so if you want to be the house of Gentile, so be it. Now, for those of us who are the house of Yashrael, 
This is what we have. This is what we call the new, the new covenant, right? This is the new covenant that everybody's under. We're under the new covenant. Yes, we are. Hebrews 8, 5. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things as Moshe was admonished of Elohim when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, says he, that you make all things according to the pattern shown to you in the mount. Now, it's that right out of the gate, there's something very important there that Yah told Moshe exactly how to make stuff in the tabernacle, right? And then he's like, he, he, he yells at him, basically admonishes. He's like, look, you need to make it just like I showed you. That's how important the little details are to Yah. Yah doesn't say things unless he means it, and he never goes back on it. Sometimes he will like not do certain things because he repents from it, and he will save you know the, the entire children of Yashrael and stuff like, you know, having the earth reach up and kill them all. But he's very attention detailed, and he doesn't change. He doesn't change yesterday, today, tomorrow, forever. It'll be forever. It's always the same. Verse six. By now, but now has he obtained a more excellent ministry. There we go, Jason. That's that one I'm talking about. By how much also he is a mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. That's the one we want, Jason. Good. For if that first covenant had been faultless, there you go, Jason. There's something wrong with that. Then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he says, behold, the days come, says Yahuwah, when I will make a renewed covenant with the house of Yashrael and with the house of Yahuda. So for anybody that thinks that the house of Gentiles are saved, there's no such thing. The house of Gentiles aren't saved, right? This, is, this covenant is, about, is between two different houses, right? There is no house of Gentiles. So if you're the house of Gentile, your father is Satan, right? Your father is Satan. Verse nine. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Mitzrayim, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, says Yahuwah. He says that the first covenant that was had a problem. You guys want to know what the first problem was with the first covenant? People didn't obey it. They didn't obey it. So if you don't obey the covenant, yes, there's a fault. It's your fault. It's the people's fault. It had nothing to do with the covenant because Yah's ways are awesome. Verse 10, for this, and this is important, Christians, this is it. This is your new covenant right now. This is the meat and potatoes. I'm bringing it to you right here. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Yashrael after those days, says Yahuwah. I will put my Torah into their mind and write it in their hearts and I will be their Elohim and they shall be to me a people. If you have taken the laws of our creator and you've tossed them on the cross, you are not in the future generations of anything. He says right there, I will put my Torah into their mind. How will it go into their mind? Because you will read it. It's not the Holy Spirit that's going to come deliver you something that has been on your shelf forever since the day you were born. Everybody has a Bible these days. You have apps on your phone. Everybody has all of this stuff. There's no excuses now to be lukewarm of anything. If you want to be a Christian, you're hell bound. You're hell bound by your own doctrine. Verse 11, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, no, Yahuwah, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. So there's going to be a time when the people that are left will all know who Yahuwah is, right? We will not have to do what I'm doing right here, which is trying to teach you guys and trying to break the cult, satanic programming of the Christian religion away from you, right? It's a cult. It's evil. Verse 12, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their Torah-less deeds will I remember no more. Why does he not remember in their Torah-less deeds? Are they continuing being Torah-less? Well, no, it doesn't say that. Two verses above that. In 10, it says you, your Torah is going to be written on your mind. If it's written on your mind and written in your hearts, you're going to do everything you possibly can not to sin against our creator. Everything, right? So yeah, He's going to remember their Torahless deeds no more. But what about those who are not keeping the Torah? Oh, he'll remember. He'll remember them good. 13, in that he says a renewed covenant, he has made the first old. Now that which decays and waxes old is ready to vanish away. What does he mean? Does that mean the covenant's gone? It didn't say that anywhere, 
right? It says the old covenant that we all abandoned. Our forefathers all abandoned it. Nobody wanted it. We've been in captivity for thousands of years. We are finally coming out of captivity and we are the house of Yashrael. We're one of the 10 tribes or maybe one of the 12 tribes. We are one of the tribes that has been dispersed across the lands, just like the scripture says. So we have an opportunity right now. Do you want to be a house of Gentile? Do you want these laws? Do you want to have this kind of evil in your life where you don't even know what the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator are and you're living in your bacon grease and everything else? Is that what you want? If that's what you want, you're on the right track. If that's not what you want, then we have something that's called the Torah. It's called the first five books of the Bible, right? Right here. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. We're, we're, we're going over it at a nauseum and we can't get enough of it and we'll never get enough of it. I can preach all day long. I can sit here and talk to you guys all day long and try to sell you guys the Torah. It is sad that you actually have to sell this to people, but people have been so brainwashed against it that you have to break through that demonic programming. I'll, I'll leave it at this. This is it. Revelation 14, 12. Here's the patience of the Kadeshim. That means the saints, right? Here are they that guard the commandments of Elohim and the faith of Yahusha. All right, guys. I love y'all. I'm out.